assalamu alaikum everyone thank you for joining us for today's program we have with us uh, sister nadia and brother kanani uh, who will be speaking to us on reflections on arafat uh, i will do a quick introduction of the speaker and then we'll begin with sister nadia followed by brother kanani so sister nadia who's also a physician and has certificate in quran and islamic study has taught in alhamra academy and also in our islamic center of boston wayland sunday school for several years and brother kanani is also a physician affiliated with islamic society of wooster and he has also done our friday khutbah and khatra at the islamic center of wayland we will begin with sister nadia Inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, they told me I have uh, 15 minutes, inshallah, to talk about the Arafah. And mashallah, we have those uh, 10 blessed day. Uh, uh, and uh, today is Yom Tarwiya, the day of Tarwiya, and tomorrow is Yom Arafah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyati a'malina, ma yahdihi Allah fala mudilla lah, wa ma yudlil fala hadiya lah, wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. MashaAllah, tomorrow, inshaAllah, we have the big day in our life, alhamdulillah, yawm arafa. And this is part one of the uh, nine days uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the ten nights and those are nine days. Wal-Fajr, wal-Layalin Ashr, wal-Shaf'i wal-Watr, wal-Layli idha yasr, hal fi thalika qasamun lidi hijr. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the dawn because he wanna us to uh, do qiyam al-Layl until dawn. And the Layalin Ashr, those are ten nights and they are nine days, and tomorrow is the ninth one, and the Eid will be the tenth, inshallah. He swears by a shaf wal water because we end our night by doing al water, and this is the envelope. We put all our, uh, mashallah, uh, salah, then it will, went to, it will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by wal layli idha yasr, by the night. He want us to spend all the night doing ibadah. هل في ذلك قسم الذي حجر؟ then Allah سبحانه وتعالى he ask us after he swears by those four ayat four signs can you deeply thinking about the importance of those ten nights and nine days about all of those days of the الحجة سبحان الله ما من أيام أحب إلى الله عز وجل من العمل الصالح فيها من هذه الأيام Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like us to do a lot of good deeds on those nine days, especially in Arafah. What the meaning of Arafah? Tomorrow is Arafah. Kul aam wa antum bikhair, mashallah. Then the day after it is Eid. What the meaning of Yawm Arafah? Arafah, it is a place outside of Mecca. It's near to Mecca. The Hujjaj, they pray Fajr in Mecca. Then they go to the place Arafah. And we have that small mountain named Arafah to uh, pray al-Zuhr and al-Asr together and to spend all the day until sunset. Then they will go to Muzdalifa to pray al-Murib and al-Aisha together. Uh, then what happened? Why it is very important day, Yawm Arafah? And what the meaning of Arafah? Arafah means introducing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he named the mountain Arafah and he named the place Arafah to tell us. In this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced the angels to his creation. And he is very proud of all of us. And he telling his malaika, look at my uh, servant, at my creation in the earth, how they are doing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduced us to his mercy. And he will tell us, I have my mercy on all of you and I will have my forgiveness for all of you. This is the meaning of Arafah. And subhanAllah, uh, the Jewish, they asked the Muslimin and they told them, uh, we have in Al-Quran ayah, you have in Al-Quran ayah, if we have it in our book, then we will make it as a Eid for us. 
And they, the Muslims, they asked them, what is this ayah? And they told them, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. When Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab, he heard about this and he said, of course, this is a Eid for us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Yawm Arafa and in Yawm Jum'ah, the day of Arafa and the day of Jum'ah. And those two days, they are our Eid and this is Eid for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent in Arafa the last ayah to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, I completed my religion. Today, I completed my grace. Today, I accepted the Islam for all of you as the religion for all of you in, the, in this earth. But this is why Yawm Arafah very important because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed his religion in the last Hajj for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the day of Arafah, subhanallah. مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَفْضَلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةً يَنْزِلُ اللَّهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا فَيُبَاهِ بِأَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ أَهْلِ السَّمَاءِ There is no day better for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the day of Arafah. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come down to the last, to the, uh, last heaven to look at his servant, look at his, the, the people of the earth, and he will be proud of all of us and he will tell his malaika, look, look at my servant. Look at all of them. They are in Arafah. They, they come from everywhere, leave everything and raise the, their hand to the sky and to have my forgiving, forgiveness and my mercy. Lam yaraw rahmati, subhanallah. They didn't see my uh, mercy. ولم يروا عذابي. And they don't see my punishment. أشهدكم يا ملائكتي أني قد أفرت لهم. I want you to be witness. I forgive all of them. أنا غفرت لهم. لم يرى أكثر عتق من النار في مثل هذا اليوم. الله سبحانه وتعالى in this day he free a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of his servant from the hellfire. And he be proud of all of, all of us and he will tell of his malaika, look at my servant, I'm so proud of them. In this, subhanallah, عشيه يوم عرفه, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يدنو إلى السماء الدنيا فيقبل على الملائكة. He will come down to the uh, lowest level of heaven and he will tell his malaika. أنا ألا لكل وفد جائزة وهؤلاء وفدي. For uh, each group, I will have a gift. And look at them. They are my guest. They are my group guest. I will give them, inshallah, the gift. أعطوهم ما سألوا. Give them whatever they will ask. ألا وإني قد وهبت مسيئهم لمحسنهم وأعطيت محسنهم ما سأل I will give the pious one whatever they will ask but the one who go astray or who have a lot of mistakes I will make the good one, the pious one to ask for forgiveness for them don't worry, I will forgive all of you when we come Sometimes, oh my God, I am full of mistakes. I did a lot of bad things. I'm not, I, uh, I don't deserve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will tell us, don't worry. I will forgive you. I will give all of you my forgiveness. Don't worry if you have mistakes, if you are good and you have a lot of good deeds, you are equal because the one who have good deeds will uh, ask for forgiveness for the one who is full of mistakes. So imagine how amazing is this day, subhanAllah. مَا رُؤْيَ الشَّيْطَانِ يَوْمًا أَصْغَرْ وَلَا أَدْحَرْ وَلَا أَحْقَرْ وَلَا أَغْيَظْ مِنْهُ فِي يَوْمِ عَرَفًا If you look at the shaytan in this day, he will be small, smaller uh, in any other day in this day. 
and he will be more angry in this day than any other day. And then they ask Prophet Muhammad why? Prophet Muhammad he answered, لما راى من تنزل الرحمات وتجاوز الله عن الذنوب العظام because a shaitan he will look at the mercy coming from the sky to the earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spread it of all the uh, muslimin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will forgive all the sins and even the greatest sins uh, in any of the muslimin alhamdulillah that's why he will be very angry and he will put the dust on his head and he will say, Ya waylata, ya waylata, ghafar Allah azza wa jalli li kulli muslimin. All my hard work all this year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in one day, he will forgive it and he will erase it. And like I don't, I didn't do anything during this year, all my hard work go away because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy in this day of Arafah, subhanAllah. Ida kanat ashiyatu yawm Arafah, lam yabqa ahadun fi qalbihi mitqalu habbatin min khardalin min iman illa ghufira lahum. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the, it will be the night of Arafah, the sunset, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look at all the muslimin and if you have small atom from iman in your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Small. Small atom of Iman in your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. And then al Muslimin they ask, Oh Rasulullah, li ahli Arafah khasa, only for the people of Arafah or the people who go to the Hajj to make tawaf and sa'i and uh, uh, they are in Mecca. And then Prophet Muhammad smiled and he said, La, belli al Muslimin a'amma, for the all Muslimin in the old world. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us? We are here. We don't go to the hajj. We are not doing tawaf. We are not doing sa'i. We are not in front of the Kaaba. We are not standing up in Arafah mountain. We are not in the Arafah place. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us? Then we have schedule for ibadah for all the day to tell us, please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept us with the hujjaj. Accept us with the Ta'ifin, accept us with the Sa'in, accept us with the uh, people who stand up in Arafah, please, please. Then first we should fast. Fasting the day of Arafah. If you fast the day of Arafah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, inshallah, forgive you all the previous year before and all the year, inshallah, to come. After, so imagine one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase the, day, the year before and the year after if you fast. Then fasting first. Second, what should we do? Subhanallah, uh, try to do the dua. And Prophet Muhammad he said, Akhtar dua wa dua ul anbiya qabli, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. My dua and the dua the prophets before me. It's la ilaha illallah, there is no God except you, Allah. La sharika lahu, there is no partner to you. Lahu al-mulk, you have the kingdom. And lahu al-hamd, uh, the praise all for you, Allah. Wa huwa ala kulli shaykhin qadir. You are able to do anything in this world. And this is the dua we should do a lot. Reading Surah Al-Ikhlas. If you read three times Surah Al-Ikhlas, like you read the whole Quran. Because one time you're reading Surah Al-Ikhlas, like you read the third of the Quran, imagine. They try to read as much as you can. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ وَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ Do it a lot during this day. سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ أَصَلَوَاتُ الْإِبْرَاهِيمِيَّةِ Because we wanted to uh, imagine and to remember all the Anbiya before and we wanted to remember Sayyidina Ibrahim and what did he do uh, when he sacrificed Sayyidina Ismail and listen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim and try to remember Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam standing up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him at tahiyyatu lillah wa salawatu tayyibat and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer him assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ask wa ummati and my ummah then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin then imagine and remember Al-Malaika makes sujood and they said, 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد Do it a lot during this day Read a lot of Quran Do a lot of dhikr Do a lot of takbir Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab and uh, Ibn Abbas They used to go to the shopping area and to the uh, uh, people and to do a lot of takbir in al Medina and the people they used to do takbir after them and do a lot of takbir and a lot of dhikr, a lot of tasbih, and a lot of good deeds, subhanallah, and try to uh, do the dua for you, for peace, for victory, for your family, and for your friends, and for your uh, teachers, and for all the world, for the humanity, and try to imagine the people in Arafah, they are all equal, and I am part of this ummah, alhamdulillah. I am at home, and but I am imagine myself with the people in Arafah. Alhamdulillah, I am part of Al Ummah Al Islamiyah. Alhamdulillah, uh, for the equality. Alhamdulillah, there is no racism in Islam. Imagine the people in Arafah, they all wear the same, the same clothes, same stuff, poor and uh, rich, and they all raising their hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, forgive us and forgive them. And have the niyyah for this day, tomorrow, inshallah, for five things. Al-ziyada fi al-umr, al-ziyada fi al-mal, al-hifz lil-ayal, al-takfir al-sayyat, wa al-tadayif lil-hasanat. Inshallah, I will do all the ibadah in this day, bi-ismillah ta'ala, the fasting and the Qur'an and the takbir and the tasbih and the uh, surat al-ikhlas and the dua, inshallah, for the niyyah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless my uh, life, my, uh, inshallah, days, my years and my brain, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase uh, uh, in wealth in my life, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect my family. This is what I want. I will do all this ibadah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect my kids, protect my parents, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them, inshallah, pleased with me, because I want them to uh, uh, make shafa'a to me in the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, erase my sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala double my hasanat, because we need it, bi-iznillah ta'ala, in the day of judgment, then we can go to the highest level of Jannah. Then, inshallah, from that the, today, the Salat al-Fajr, try to uh, pray Fajr, do takbir, and make the dua, and try to uh, uh, until the uh, sun uh, rise, and then uh, try to uh, sleep for one hour or two hours, then spend all the day reading Quran, and making tasbih, and making dua, 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 having a lot of dua, and make the dua from your heart, it will come to the sky, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at us, and inshallah will forgive us, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept us with the people in Arafah, bi-ismillah ta'ala. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, maybe I will um, I talk uh, more than uh, my uh, time, because uh, now it's 9.18, and I should uh, speak until 9.15. Thank you very much. Inshallah, I will make dua for all the Wayland community. Give me in my dua, and this is, will be my Eid gift, bi-ismillah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakallah, Sister Nadia. And with that, I hand it to Salim Kanani. Uh, before, I did want to let you know, if anybody had questions, they can certainly chat those questions to us, and we can take that at the end of the talk. So, Brother Kanani, please. Jazakallah khairan. Audhu billahi minash shaitwani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Inna alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakallah khairan for giving me this honor. And thank you so much, sister, for a very comprehensive and inspiring talk on the day of Arafah. I really don't have anything to add on the Yom Arafah, but I will talk about the concept of Yom, whose plural is Ayyam in the Quran. And then I will talk about how did the Prophet وسلم, celebrate his Eid. So the word Yom, has multiple meaning in the Quran as well as in the Arabic language. Simple way of that it's a 24 hour period. Al-Layl or the night is 
from the time the sun sets down until the sun rises again. And Annahar is the daytime after the rising of the sun till the setting of the sun. And the Yom is basically a combination of Allel wa Nahar. So in Quran, Yom is also used in the context of one day. For example, Qala Mu'idukum Yom Zina wa Inyushar al Nasu Duha. It's from the story of Musa wasalam, that the place and time of the promise, which means when Musa wasalam, will be facing the magicians of Pharaoh, will be the day of adornment, Yom Zina, on which the people will be gathered at the time of noon. So here, Yom Zina is actually referring to one day, but it can also mean a festival, an occasion of festival. Yom, whose plural is ayam, is also used in the context of a period of time. For example, Allah is the one who created the heavens and the earth and whatever is between them in seven days. Now, we cannot say it's a seven 24 hour period. Seven days is basically seven phases or a period of time, a long period of time. In Quran, a day can also be equal to 50,000 days of our time, the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ta'arujul that the angels and the ruh, the spirit or Jibreel wasalam, will be ascending to him on a day whose magnitude will be equal to 50,000 years of your reckoning. And then one thing that I want to talk about in a little bit more detail is and remind them through the days of Allah. Now, ayam or ayamullah refers to historical events in which certain communities were destroyed when they denied their prophet, their messenger who was sent to them and they started to make fun of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be reminded by reading about those events to learn some messages. Another way of adhakkirum bi ayamillah is to remind them of special occasions of Allah when there is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll talk about from a hadith that there are two Eids, two days of festivity in Islam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favors and blessings descend upon us. A sister mentioned in her talk about the Yom Arafah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show and display his pride in front of the angels. So if we go to the concept of Eid in Islam, Ada Ya'idu Eidan. The Eid means something which recurs, which comes again and again, a recurring event. And Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala no mentioned that when the Prophet sallallahu came to Medina, he found that the people of Medina had two special days in a year before the advent of Islam, in which they would spend their time playing, basically. And the Prophet ﷺ said something which is very, very profound. And it applies not only to certain days, it applies to a lot of other things in Islam. So I will expand upon, explain that as well. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Kana lakum yawman, yawman tal That you had two days in which you used to just play. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced these two days with two other days that are better. The day of Fitr, your Eid al-Fitr, and the Yawm al-Nahr, the day of the Eid al-Adha. My focus is on Abdalakum, which is Ibdal, exchanging, changing. And what our Islam, our religion Islam has done is that it has changed customs into religious traditions. Following them becomes a source of reward for us. For example, paying respect to the parents is a custom in every culture. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turned it into a religious tradition that if you take care of your parents, you will be rewarded. And if you don't, you will have to be answerable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the days which were playing and wasting time were replaced by two days which are better than that. What it means is that you don't have to just enjoyment. Islam is not against enjoyment or entertainment. And that the believers should also be entertained or entertain themselves. They should feel pleasure. 
So Islam is not all about seriousness and somberness except for two days of the year. We can entertain ourselves within the boundaries of the Sharia without crossing them, without going into something which is haram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us two days in which we have to not only entertain ourselves, but we have to do something other than that as well. And the concept of Eid comes from the ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَلَتُقَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَا لَكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ that you magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you show your gratitude to him. So we have to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. We have to magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. But these two are special days in which in addition to enjoying, in addition to spending time with our family and friends, we should also remember that it is Allah who has given us these days. It is through the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to enjoy his blessings, particularly on these days. And therefore, we have to magnify him by saying Allah Akbar the Takbirat, and we have to offer special gratitude to him. Now, what would the Prophet وسلم, would do on Eid day? And the question is, do we really have to follow? Do we really have to celebrate the Eid the way he did it? Or can we do the way, whatever way we want? And here comes the ayah from Quran, which is actually a very important concept. And this is the concept of ittiba'u rasul, following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّنَّ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُبَكُمْ That if you really claim to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me, that is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah, you do everything the way he did it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love you in return and he will forgive your sins. So we can celebrate the way we want, but if we celebrate the way the Prophet Wasallam did, we will be basically qualifying ourselves for a great reward. And what can be a greater reward than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah says, I love you. So here, the way the Prophet Wasallam would start his day of Eid would be to perform a ghusl. Now ghusl is also a custom, taking a bath. Everybody takes a bath, it's the principle of hygiene. But again, I will say the exchanging of custom into tradition, into a religious, uh, you can say, em emblem or insignia, a shire of Islam, that if you take a bath on the day of Eid with the intention that you are following in the footsteps of the Prophet Wasallam, you will not only be purifying your body, you will be washing away your sins, you will be qualifying for a great reward of following the Sunnah. So Islam lays a lot of emphasis on cleanliness. Everybody knows the cleanliness is half of Islam. And we are required to take a bath at least once a week or every Friday, definitely every Friday. But the Eid day is special. And if the Eid day happens on Friday and you say, I'm taking a bath for the Eid because this is what the Prophet ﷺ did. And I'm taking a bath for the day of Friday because this is what the Prophet ﷺ ordered. Inshallah, our reward will be multiplied too. Then on the day of Eid al-Fitr, the Prophet ﷺ will eat before he will set out for Eid prayers. But on the day of Eid al-Adha, he will not eat. Actually, he will pray, offer his Eid prayers sooner on that day. Then he will do the sacrifice and then he will eat the meat of the sacrifice as well. And our Islamic tradition is that the meat of Udhiyah that we have, it should be divided into three parts. One part for ourselves, one part to be distributed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one part to be distributed to our family members. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had mentioned for this day that wahiya ayyamu aklin wa shurbin. These are the days of eating and drinking. Now drinking here means basically uh, the halal drinking. And the ayyamu tashriq, the 11th, 12th and 13th days, the word tashriq is derived from sharq, which is the rising of the sun. In those days, people did not have any other means of preserving the meat except for putting it out in the sun to be. So the meat of Udhya will be put out on the ground and it will be dried up by the sunlight. So these are the Ayamut Tashrik. And we are actually prohibited from fasting on the day of Eid and on the three days, Ayamut Tashrik. Another importance of Ayamut Tashrik is that the Takbirat of Eid al Adha start from the time of the going to the Eid prayers on the day, on the 10th day and continue till the Asr of the 13th day. 
So these are ayam of ma'dudat, even for people who are not making the hajj, so that spiritually we can be with the people who are making hajj. As it happens nowadays, very few people are making the hajj. Instead of three to four million people, there are not even 30,000 people making the hajj this year. But we can all reap the reward, the spiritual reward of hajj by following in the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ and performing our Eid the way he did it. The next thing which the Prophet ﷺ did was to wear the best clothes. In fact, uh, Fatima radiallahu and Ali radiallahu ta'ala had mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ wanted us to wear the best clothes that we had. He wanted us to put the best perfume and he wanted us to offer the best sacrifice. So Islam has to do about husn or ihsan, beauty in everything. Allah is jameel, he's beautiful. He likes that we show beauty in whatever we do in our words, in our action, our behavior. And the same applies to different rituals of the Hajj as well. So he also mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, Now, Another thing to do on that day is that how would the people greet each other on the day of Eid? And the greeting of the Sahaba and the Prophet was minna wa minkum. May Allah accept it from you and from us. Now, do we really have to say it in Arabic? Can we say Eid Mubarak in Urdu or Happy Eid? Have a nice day. Yes, we can do it. There is no prohibition. But as I mentioned earlier, the ittiba of Rasul, the following in the footsteps of the Prophet requires that we do the way he did it. So there is nothing wrong in learning. It's very simple to run taqabbalaw minna wa minkum. Again, if we do it, we have performed an act of sunnah, a reward word worthy act. So again, you can say Eid Mubarak, but if you say in Arabic, keeping in mind that this was the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and his sahaba, inshallah, it will bring uh, extra reward. The last thing that I want to mention, you know, there's a lot to be said, but the time is running out, is that we have two ahadiths actually, from both from Aisha radiallahu ta'ala now, that she mentioned that on the day of Eid, she was at home with the Prophet and some children and young adults came and started to play daf or music in the masjid of the Prophet and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala came and he was very upset. He said, Mazamiru shaitan, are these the instruments of shaitan in the house of the Prophet And the Prophet said, Abu Bakr, this is the day of Eid, leave them alone. So there is nothing wrong in other ways of entertainment so long as we observe the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another hadith, which is the last hadith that I will mention, and that's actually a beautiful hadith, that the Prophet Aisha mentioned that the Habashi people were singing and dancing in the masjid of the Prophet and the Prophet stood up and I stood with my cheek lying on his shoulder. And I kept watching them and the Prophet just stood quiet and finally said, are you satisfied? She said, yes, I'm satisfied. Then he said, okay, let's go in. Now, when we go out to parties on the day of Eid, especially I've noticed that women like to sit longer and we men get upset. Let's go home, let's go home, let's go home. But there is a prophetic model here that he did not leave his place until Aisha radiallahu ta'ala was satisfied. That's the kind of care and love that he had for his wives. Next thing that I want to talk about is to give gifts. The Prophet has mentioned that give gifts, you will love each other. And the third and the last thing that I want to mention is to visit our relatives, which is Salatu Rahm, especially the orphans. In fact, there is a beautiful hadith which brings tears to my heart when the Prophet saw a yatim who was very quiet. He did not have good clothes. And he talked to the Prophet, you know, I have nobody. I said, wouldn't you like me to be your father? And wouldn't you like Fatma to be your sister? So again, So on this day of Eid, we should not only thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should be looking out for people, especially the orphans in our community, the people who are asking or who are too embarrassed, too shy to ask, and we should seek them out, involve them in the celebration, and share whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us with them. Zakallah, Dr. Knani. Um, I don't see any questions on the chat, so I can be, while I'm making some announcements, if anybody has any questions, please let me know or please put it in the chat. Um, so again, we want to thank you all for joining us today. 
reminding you that we will not be having Eid prayer at the at the Islamic Center of Boston Wayland, but we will be having an Eid Khatara at 10.30 a.m. with Dr. Lazuni on Zoom. Uh, keep in mind, it's also Juma, so we will be having the Juma Salat at the Islamic Center of Boston Wayland by registration, and that will be led by Imam Talal Eid. Um, so please register, we still have some sub spots open. Um, again, we love to see you uh, all on these blessed and joyous days, uh, both on Zoom and inshallah at the Islamic Center of Boston Wayland. Um, hope you like our program. I see no further questions. So thank you again for inspiring us to Sister Nadia and Dr. Kanani uh, for sharing with us how we should spend the day of Arafah and how do we spend the day of Eid. Inshallah, we will be using some of these pearls of wisdom and inshallah, I'll hope to see you soon um, in our next Khatara or on Friday Eid prayers. Assalamu alaikum. Eid Mubarak, everyone. Eid Mubarak. <laughs>